All righty, well, thank you so much for being with us today on the Kelly Kelly Show. Uh, is it too soon to sound the alarm bells for the Buccaneers? Uh, some would say so after less than a Super Bowl-like performance yesterday, losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have lost four games in a row before then. Um, they can't run the ball. They, Tom Brady's pressured a lot. It's pretty tough. Big Ed Doug, I can see get the words out right. Big Ed Davis, Stan Talk Radio Network's executive producer and sports guru is with us in the control room. Ed, after a 3-3 start, is it time to worry that this team has what it takes to make it to another Super Bowl? Ed has no mic today. And Ed has no mic today. So, so. I, I would say if I was Ed, then it's still too early to panic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and in fact, we won't, although they do have some problems with the offensive line. They're not able to run the ball, and uh, that puts more pressure on the passing game. So having said that, uh, let's switch from football, Kelly, to Stone Crabs. Stone crab season has opened. It has. Do you like stone crabs? No. Oh, oh yeah. man. I'm so excited. I I'm would walk on games. my knees a hundred miles to have just for a stone crab, I'll tell you Absolutely. that. So I just want to say this. Besides listening to our show, you can view it live on Facebook right now at the Kelly Kelly Show page. And it will also be on Tan Talk's YouTube channel as well as podcast for expats around the world who like to stay connected to their hometown. And Doug, you just got a phone call before we left for the station today. I did. Who I was did. that from? Uh, a gal named Terry. Who she said, was calling from Europe. She was calling from Europe to say, and I'm, I wrote it down, I enjoy watching your radio show on my tablet. And uh, I'm in Europe. I'll be back in Clearwater toward the end of the year. I'm waiting for my ballot so I can vote on all the great things that are going on in Clearwater. We'll yeah, talk more I've about that. I've met Terry several times. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Do we owe her money or something? Or? No, no, no. no. Okay. I check photos. I, <laughs> I think her dad is uh, buried at the Clearwater Memorial, or oh. uh, it has a memorial on the, um, in, in Crest Lake Park. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we're coming at you live on the Tan Talk Radio Network, which consists of three stations and 3 a.m. and 3 f.m. signals that blanket all of Tampa Bay. So thanks for being with us today. And besides listening to our show, you can view it, I believe, on Facebook at the Kelly Kelly Show page. Yes, I, I already said that. Doug. You did? Okay, yeah, good, did. good. Well, I'm doubling back. Okay. So what's that, What's next? Uh, we're going to go to a couple of ads right yes. now. But first, see if you know the answer to this trivia question. Okay. True or false, there are more Barbie dolls in Italy than Canadians in Canada. I know that's an odd question. The answer, right after this. What was the question? <laughs> true or false, there are more Barbie dolls in True or false. I Italy. was going to say it true or false. Yeah. It's true. Strange little bit of trivia on you. Wow. It's just a teaser before you go into the ads. Just Hopefully pull them back in before they change the channel. So we're going to bring it in. I'll bring it in. And then we'll introduce you. And we'll go there. We'll I'm going to give you something. You don't say anything about this on the air. But once you go to that website, see all the photo pictorials, the articles I posted. Um, okay. Yeah. Pictures. Nice. I've been promoting it big time. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Posted the mayor's article. St. B. Town's endorsement. Yeah. And if you had ever good. answered my Facebook friend request, you'd see all the... I don't do the, Facebook. You don't... I have a Facebook account, but I can't. I get creamed when I go there, so I just don't even do it. I see. Yeah, I have to, I, I if somebody can understand responds, that. I got to cut and paste and send it to myself. Yeah. And being so. a council member, I bet you get attacked a lot. I don't know. I don't know. Good luck. Good. Good. It's like Frank, you know, uh, Aaron Smith. Is, oh. He keeps posting these real bad. I, I don't watch his YouTube or his his channel. Frank said he never goes and watches it. It just pisses him off. Yeah. So what's the point, you know? Yeah. So I take it you're not running for mayor then? No. <laughs> okay. 
All right, well, thank you for sticking with us here on the Kelly Kelly Show. I'm Doug Kelly with my better three quarters, Kelly Kelly, co-host of the radio show as well. And before the break, I asked if it's true or false, there are more Barbie dolls in Italy than Canadians in Canada. The answer, yes, it's true. Wow. I mean, you know, something that far out crazy. That is true. coins has got to be true, right? That's so let's, uh, let's talk about our first guest. Our first guest today is David Albritton. All right. And he's here to talk about a Clearwater referendum. He's a Clearwater council member. Yes, he is. And he's been a council member for a very long time. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And he keeps getting reelected. Well, yeah. you know, he keeps coming back whether you like it or not. What can you <laughs> say? But uh, he has been married for more than 43 years to wife Mary Helen, who's a retired school guidance counselor. He's got two kids. He's got, what, three grandkids? Well, I've got three kids. Oh, three kids. Well, and I've got uh, three grandkids. Well, let's see. I'm sorry. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me, four grandkids and two great grandkids. Wow. Okay. Wow. Didn't know about that, did I you? I didn't know about the two. I knew about the one. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Wow. So, All what right. is the Clearwater referendum? Okay. The referendum is this is a very important vote coming up November the 8th. Yes. And it's the last item on your ballot. If you're voting, it's very important to vote yes on this. Um, it's all about the bluff development. And uh, I'll tell you a little, little bit about the bluff development. Yes. The parcels include a 1.3 acre site of the now demolished Harborview Center at the northwest corner of Osceola Avenue and Cleveland Street and a 2.6 acre vacant city hall which is about a half block south of that. Now, you know, we've expanded Coachman Park now. It goes all the way from Drew to Pierce. Right. From Osceola to the water. Now, at the very top, where the city hall and this, this the library and next door to the library where this um, 1.3 acre parcel is, those are development opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what we're... we're uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. Now, okay. proposed for the Harborview site is a 13-story, 150, uh, they call it key, which is room hotel, with 9,000 square foot of commercial space, including a 1,000-person conference center and rooftop bar. A separate two-story building would include 12,000 square feet of commercial space and a beer garden. Okay, 150... Uh, Eight room hotel, two story commercial building is planned at the uh, Harborview site. And then at the City Hall site, uh, five to six hundred apartments uh, in two 27 story uh, towers. And the site will have 25,000 square feet of space for ground floor retail restaurants and, and cultural uses. So, why apartments and not condos? Well, you know, we've got experience with condos. Um, a lot of times people buy them and then they're here two or three months a year and they right. empty the rest. So we figured the best way to uh, really spark the downtown was have people who are gonna live full time down right. here. That makes perfect sense. Well, where can someone see the conceptuals and find out more about the project? Go to yesforclearwater.com. It's a website and you can see all the uh, beautiful conceptual pictures of what this is gonna look like. Um, it's uh, got also more details to what I'm telling you today that you can actually see and, and kind of digest. Gotcha. Why do we have to go to the referendum? The city charter requires sale of city property to be the highest bidder and want to specifically sell the developer uh, that's building the $400 million project. Mm. So uh, also the charter states that a sale or lease of property between Drew Street and Pierce um, and Osceola in the Bay in that area there requires a referendum. I got you. I got you. Wow, $400 million development project. It's a $400 million wow. development. That's awesome. Who are the developers? Um, there's two. There's an experienced uh, local developer, the Denuzio Group, uh, joined with the New York developer, the Gotham Organization. 
It's a five generation family firm with a hundred year track record developing 35,000 apartment units in New York. Fantastic. And uh, the New York uh, developer has ongoing financial arrangements with Goldman Sachs. Wow, how did they get chosen? Well, the city put out an RFP, uh, which is a request for proposals over a year ago and attracted two development opportunities. Neither were chosen, uh, so they went out again last spring, and two came back in, two different ones, and the Bluffs group was chosen to enter into negotiations. I understand. And then Denunzio, is that correct? Denunzio. Denunzio. Now, he's a, a local developer, right? He's local. He's the, uh, Dustin Denunzio has built several hotels on Clearwater Beach, he has hotels down in uh, St. Pete, and um, you know he's a uh, he's got a track record of building very nice uh, hotels, and the Gotham organization has a track record of keeping things that they build, so they don't just build them and flip them, which was uh, beneficial to us. Very important. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Where um, I guess one big question is where people can park. That's always an issue. It seems like downtown. Yeah, it's always, uh, right. well, I can tell you this, just as a, an observation, when we have, even in the old Coachman Park, when we have uh, the Jazz Holiday, which is finished up last weekend, um, we attract 15,000 people downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, they all find a place to park. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of uh, parking garages for that are empty in the evening and people gravitate to that, to those garages. We can use the county garages, we can use the uh, lots at City Hall, which now we're not gonna be able to use, but across the street, the uh, that uh, lot will still be available. And, um, you know, what we're doing is um, this development project, we're requiring that the parking for the twin 27 story towers and also the hotel be put underground in the bluff. Mm. And it's more expensive, it's basically double the cost of putting it above ground. But we wanted to have, as people drove along Osceola, unobstructed views through the buildings of the park. Mm -hmm. We thought that was really important. So the, the architect, which is a local architect as well, has designed these uh, developments to be perpendicular to Osceola where you can see through and then be invited to come through the park at miscellaneous locations all up and down uh, north to south from Drew to Pierce. So will you still have a water view that way? We'll still have yeah. some water yeah. view yeah. that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the garages, uh, you know, uh, uh, include 169 spaces, 50 dedicated to for city use, for public use. The city hall and site will include five to 600 spaces underground, and then uh, depending on how many apartments are built. They have, uh, because of course they haven't done any, they've just done conceptuals and they really want to build 600 apartments, but we've given them leeway once they start putting the project together, if they if they build, have to build less to meet the requirements for downtown, it can be between five and 600 apartments. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, the extra parking, they're still gonna build uh, 769 spaces that'll go over to the hotel. Mm -hmm. okay. um, what are the financials? Okay, well, this is a, this is a good news. Good news, the development team would pay the city 24.7 million to buy two parcels, 9.3 million for the Harborview site and 15.4 million uh, for the city hall site. Now, we had two appraisals on both of these sites. The city did the appraisals and the, these were the highest bids, the appraisals that came back. Mm -hmm. And they were ba based on highest and best use, which is condominiums. Well, we're not building condominiums, we're building a hotel and we're building apartments. But they still paid full price that, you know, that we got. So they didn't balk about that, they went ahead and paid it. Okay. The city would contribute $22 million to support the underground parking, and that comes out of the parking fund. Uh, no tax, extra taxes out of uh, 
you know, uh, residents. Resident taxes. Yeah. Uh, this incentive would come out of the parking fund and, and rev revenue generated from meters and customer fees. And of course, most of the money from the parking fund comes from people visiting our city that, you know, from the tourist industry. Mm -hmm. The Community Redevelopment Agency, or a CRA, collects a special tax on downtown properties and they pay developers 1.5 million in impact fees out of just the CRA, so no, nothing out of the rest of the uh, city. Developers are still deciding whether to build an elevated walkway between the sites, and I hope they do because if we, we had eliminated it, it was in the original plans to uh, knock back some, some of the cost of it, but it really needs to be put back in, and they're gonna pay 50% up to $2 million of the cost, and the city would pay the balance. So that's how it will be funded, essentially, the $400 million? The $400 million is going to be, that's the developer is going to fund that through Goldman Sachs. They have a, they have a uh, great relationship from building so many apartments in New York City that uh, they're going to be funded through them. Gotcha. Great. Gotcha. How, is, how will this affect my taxes? That's the all-important question. <laughs> Uh, favorably, uh, we're turning unused vacant public property that is not taxed, the city hall and the uh, Harbor View Center there, because the city owns it. We're turning it into private property generating significant real, um, real estate taxes. In the first year, the project will generate nearly $4 million in property tax revenue, wow. which is currently generating zero right now. Right, right. That's fantastic. Um, well, how will this sale benefit the city? Well, in addition to a $400 million tax base from the new residences and hotel, an increased number of people living downtown and visiting the hotel will enliven the entire downtown experience. Uh, it will benefit the businesses and generate additional dollars in sales revenue. And I tell you what, you know, Clear downtown Clearwater is a risk. It's been a risk for 40 years. Um, for new uh, money coming in. Mm -hmm. This shows that there's a developer that wants to bring $400 million down to downtown Clearwater. Yeah, and what will happen is when other people see that that's happening, all the property values will raise and property taxes will raise along with it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, one of the things about our downtown that's so important and a lot of people miss it is there's unlimited height to downtown. And the reason we want to really get downtown up and vibrant is because it's very dense uh, area for property and taxes. If we can get this thing buzzing and being vibrant, it'll just bring in more taxes to the coffers for everyone in Clearwater. And you know also psychologically, people attract people. Yes. So when you have people coming down and visiting residents and tourists alike, uh, other people, it's that old mentality. If you go to a flea market and everybody's crowded around one table, you want to go see what's going on. You walk up and look too. So, and, no, that's going to happen. And great. generally, restaurants do better when there's other restaurants around. Right, them. right. Just, you know, if you notice, they all build them in the same area yeah. because it generates business. You have a Wendy's, there's a McDonald's, there's a Burger exactly. King. Yeah, it all goes hand in hand. After this building is completed, can it then be resold to a second party? No. Unless the buyer is a qualified for-profit with experience operating mixed-use multifamily developments, the development agreement requires the key principals, Gotham and D'Annunzio, to maintain control until the project is built and then allows limited transfers to only qualified transferees who are, are a, a for-profit company in the business of such development and operations. Okay. And again, I said, uh, you know, both the Nunzio and Gotham um, have a history of holding on to their developments. Right. And there is a 30-year development agreement that's mm -hmm. going to go with this that can't be changed. So, um, Well, will the apartment units be offered for sale or rent? Uh, and who will be the typical residents? Well, the 27-story Twin Towers, which is the same height as Water's Edge, Right are luxury, water view, long-term rental apartments only, not for sale as condominiums. The goal is to get full-time uh, working people, not snowbirds, to live, work, and play in downtown Clearwater. 
The typical resident will be young families and professionals working in places like Morton Plant or other major employers downtown. Gotcha. Okay. How will this sale affect the property that was purchased from the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, which was the subject of the last referendum? Yes, it was. Not at all. The city still owns the Pierce Street property that abuts the new Coachman Park's North End parking lot. Okay. Well, how will the sale affect the plans for the park? Imagine Clearwater, which was, which is a phenomenal project and, and on its own, $84 million upgrade. And that will be open in less than a year. We're anticipating the opening of the park to be mid-June. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that uh, we're going to really have a great gala event for the 4th of July. I back down. I like that. your shirt, by the way, with the fireworks. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. That's it. Cool. It's the last planned part of the full development of the original 2017 Imagine Clearwater Park plans, which has its stated goal of activation of Osceola Avenue. The development will be uh, complement the park with 40,000 square feet of retail, commercial, restaurant space in the two buildings and the twin residential towers on the old City Hall site and the hotel built on a portion of the old Harborview site. Gotcha. Okay. Well, John, uh, well, will the public lose the ability to visit this property once it's developed? The contract for sale includes an agreement that the public access is guaranteed through the development properties directly into the new park. Perfect. As I said, they were per everything was developed perpendicular, so yeah. you'll have a lot of access points all mm -hmm. the way down Osceola to get in the park. The new buildings are constructed <coughs> perpendicular, and, uh, you know, we want to create a public, family-friendly amenity, such as restaurants, plazas, and green spaces. Certainly. What will happen to the parking for the Capitol Theater? Well, with City Hall site, mostly people park there now, the old City Hall site. But mm -hmm. the project provides parking for the private development and, the, and a minimum of 50 extra public spaces at Harborview site. To provide additional parking for the park and downtown activities, the city has acted as the community redevelopment just concluded buying the corner lot on Osceola and Pier Street from Peace Memorial Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. So their parking lot in the back in the building was demoed and um, we're going to build a 550 space parking garage right there to help out uh, all the activation of Cleveland Street and okay. the park. Okay. Okay, I've heard this question a couple of times uh, from a couple of different people. Why do anything at all? Uh, can't this property be part of Imagine Clear, Clearwater? Will this really revitalize downtown? Listen, this is the most, I, I gotta tell you, I'm seven generations living in Clearwater. I've been here all my life and my family's been here. This, this is an opportunity, I'm telling everybody that's listening, this is a great opportunity for the city of Clearwater residents. We cannot let this pass us by. The referendum, when approved, brings forth a $400 million project and almost 200 permanent full-time jobs as transformative investments in our downtown. And, you know, converting city-owned property to a tax base, to publicly owned, you know, used land. Right. Um, the approved design offers plenty of public spaces, cultural opportunities. Transforming Coachman Park via Imagine Clearwater was the first step. The second is the activation of Osceola along with our beautiful bluff. Together they will revitalize the potential for all Clearwater residents. Fantastic. I heard there was this study that it's going to bring $800 million in revenue to the city. Yeah, well, so, as soon as we activate downtown, yeah. um, it, the, all possibilities. Listen, the people on the beach, and you can't argue that we have a great uh, beach right. uh, now. And people on the beach are looking forward when they spend a couple of days and get sunburned. They want something else to do, and to come sure. down to the park and downtown and yeah. try our restaurants is going to be a perfect opportunity for them. Sure. So, so don't so. don't forget, this is on your ballot. If you have a mail ballot and you haven't put it in yet, the last thing you vote on on that ballot if you're a resident of Clearwater of Clearwater is this referendum and please mark yes Kelly and I we already sent our ballots in marking yes for those as well 
Got my and, shirt on. Yes, and for Kelly Clearwater. has the Yes for Clearwater shirt on. Yes, she does. <laughs> and uh, we're real excited about it. And uh, it's, I, I just think it's a win win any way you look at it. So uh, if you haven't voted, uh, you can still vote all the way up until 7 p.m. on mm -hmm. November 8th. November 8th. So make sure you vote and get in there and support this because it's got nothing but good things for the for the city. You know, and we're seeing so many people supporting this and a lot of people that have been against things. Um, Ed just wrote a note. Is downtown Clearwater interested in a nightlife? Well, absolutely. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's there's intended. no doubt about that. Well, we've been talking with uh, David Albritton. Has said he's a native of Clearwater, even though he doesn't wear a grass skirt. He's still a native here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, sometimes he might. Oh well, yeah, but you don't know. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's been great having you on the show. Thanks so much. And uh, great questions, by the way. Excellent questions. I uh, wish I'd have formulated them myself, but I, I, I like them very <laughs> well, much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here and to talk to your uh, the people Our and vast um, audience. Yep. There you go. There you go. That's super. All right, Dave uh, Albritton, and a uh, super great guy, also a city council member, a friend of ours and all that, so it's been great having him on the show. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be back uh, with uh, the more of the Kelly Kelly Show. Don't leave us, because we have a great guest coming up in the second segment. And uh, so stay with us, and uh, we'll be back right after this. All right, we did it. Nice you did it. You did it. Did I run over? I ran over a yeah, little, little bit. bit. No, but it's, it's we got everything in, and it, it's important. Yeah, Good. this is this is important. Well, thanks for letting me uh, come as spouse. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> she deserves. Uh, Hopefully, you have a nice turnout tonight. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. All right, bud. Take thanks care. Thanks again. Yep. Bye. All right. Come on yeah. down. Hey, how are you? Good. Good job. Here's my card. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the work you do with seniors, um, and that's uh, we have a lot of interaction with grandparents. We help parents with the custody process, where right? grandparents play a pretty big role in our oh, work. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, nice meeting. All right, take care. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great. All right, Jay. Yes, great to see you both again. You have water. I have one too. Oh. Water is good. So, so what happened to the board? They, they ordered a board and they delivered the wrong one. Uh, and so they had to switch it out. While they're doing the switch out, we have, a, just in case this happens, we mm -hmm. have a backup uh, board yeah. here. So. so you didn't have to stop programming no. at all? Yes. No, this goes right out, same as nobody knows any different. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. My son is going through just this situation with his... Uh, Baby mama. I remember you you mentioned that um, yeah, yeah. the last time we were on. Yeah. yeah. So is he married? I'm sorry. He he's not married. Yeah. So but the, the seeing the kids, they have a court order and she moved the case to a different county and she even though the court order exists, she's telling him when he can and cannot see him. So I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. Yeah. I mean I wouldn't it's best not for me to not get too No, technical. I'm not saying anything about it. I, oh, okay. want, I want to hear oh, yeah. what you have to say, and I'm going yeah, to give them your comments. I think you guys will love yeah, hearing I'm, some I'm of the updates we've got here. Well, if he wants to reach out to us, he absolutely sure. can. So. Sure. You said you had some new things going on? Yeah, just since we last spoke, we basically, through interacting with parents yeah. every day, learning more about these other challenges that they have. Right. And so that's led to us basically widening the scope of... Yes, yeah, say everything you, want, you need to say. Great, great. Yeah. Is there a way to... You lock this so that there's no... Oh, shit. There you go. Sorry about this. No, it's okay. Yeah, so Greg's making his exchange tonight and it's uh okay. it's a pretty far drive so okay yeah that's why he's not able to be here do i need a headset or anything yeah, yeah. no uh you normally we do i'm only doing this so i can i know when to come back in gotcha for the show usually he sits there as you know we, we can 
think so, right? I have to go behind me to do that. No, no, no. He doesn't need a headset. What? He doesn't need his headset? No, neither did Dave. Remember? Uh oh. Caught <laughs> in the middle? Nah. <laughs> I saw you put it on your head, and I thought something I, was different. I need to know when, when we come in. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then, then why I'm bringing it in? That's right, you are. What's the countdown until we're back? Uh, about a minute. A minute? Yep, or less. Did you guys fare okay during the storm? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Kelly Kelly Show. <laughs> I'm Kelly Kelly. I'm here with Doug Kelly, my better half. All right. And we're here with Jake Bornstein. He's a successful local businessman and the founder and COO of Our Children Have Rights. Jake, welcome. And tell us about that organization and your first year performance. Sure. Well, it's, it's great to be back here. Um, Greg and I were here. It was last winter. Yeah. So we're very excited to share the updates with you um, and really humbled to, to be here and, and you helping us just tell more people about the mission and inform the listeners on how we can help them and their friends or families who uh, may have friends or people that are that are going through these processes. But okay. in short, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, it's OurChildrenHaveRights.org. We're a web-based nonprofit. We've been around for about a year and a half, uh, just wrapped up our, our first full year of programming. And what we do is we help parents across the country navigate the different processes related to different matters of child custody, but also co-parenting. And it could be it could be a single mother, it could be a single father, it could be an unwed couple expecting a child. Sometimes they're amicable, sometimes they're not. Right. Um, it could be a married couple seeking divorce with with minor children. And really, the goal is to help more children um, avoid being in a living environment that doesn't promote their healthy development. So um, it's really condensing the amount of time and the duration that a child is the subject of the litigation process. Mm -hmm. And so we do it through. A lot of educational materials, um, free direct services, free consultations. We do it over Zoom, FaceTime, email, phone, but also free document review, looking at things like parenting plans and other related documents. And then we have a network of program partners, um, many of whom are, are locally based, that they help us with the things that Greg and I don't do or can't do. We're not licensed therapists. Um, we're not licensed counselors. So we're not lawyers. Exactly, right. exactly. Um, right. Things like housing assistance, rental assistance. Uh, so having program partners who have those services, we're able to help more parents um, with other with other things. That's phenomenal. Well, tell us about your performance in your first year. This is it's been a year. So what? How's it gone? It's been a year. It's it's going great. Um, July is what we considered our official launch date, which was July of 2021. Right. So this past July, we just wrapped up our first full year of programming and. You know, I can speak for Greg, who's not here tonight. Uh, we couldn't be more <coughs> pleased and proud of the work that, that we've done in the first year, specifically as it relates to really the important stuff, the outcomes, uh, the measurable results, um, how many parents we, we help with these processes. It's, it's over 15,000 parents, uh, which is a lot, but again, we're web-based, so anyone can access us, and that's the beauty of being virtual and having yes. a web-based organization where we meet parents where they are, regardless of where they reside, regardless of the state, the county, um, anyone can, can come to the site. Uh, and then we also measure that in terms of how many parents that we had one-on-one -on -one consultations with. Mm -hmm. It was just under 700 in total. Um, and again, those are free consultations over Zoom, FaceTime, phone, email. We really let the parent decide the method of communication, whatever they're most comfortable with. And then there's the, the free documentation review. And I believe it was about 300 parenting plans that we that we looked at um, and other related documents. So, again, in terms of the stuff that really matters, um, we're very happy with with that in, in year one. Fantastic! Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It sounds like That's a awesome. like a tremendous amount of uh, progress yeah. in such a short time. Yeah. In fact, we, we kind of have to be mindful of. We obviously we want to help as many people as we can. Gotcha. But you can only speak to so many parents each day. You can only review so many documents right. each day, and also. You know, we have all the programming to run and, and just run the organization day to day. So in terms of growth, it's, you know, we want to get more people to come to the site. Most of the time when the parent, the, the parent doesn't interact with us most of the time. 
They come to the site. It's almost like going to the grocery store. They know what their needs are. The site's very easy to navigate. Um, if you go to the grocery store, you don't need someone on staff to help you find milk or poultry. You know which aisles to go to and how to find it. So we're very happy about that um, because we that was by design, building something that's easy for people to find what they came to the site looking for, mm -hmm. uh, which then allows us to uh, not get over capacity with one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, interactions with parents. That's, that's something, huh? So how have you expanded the scope of how you help parents with community resources? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. That's really probably the main thing we want to get the word out about, uh, especially across Pinellas County. But as Greg and I, the more we started interacting day to day with more parents, you start learning more about these other challenges that they have. Mm -hmm. We refer to that as ancillary challenges. Um, and they do intertwine and have a lot to do with the custody process. You're listening, not just talking. Exactly. Right. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we're very, Greg and I are good listeners. We're very coachable. But, you know, these are things that he had his lived experience, but he didn't have to worry about rental assistance or, you know, dental assistance for, for the uninsured. He, you know, he had a flourishing IT career. He had the means to, to um, utilize the resources that he needed. But one of the more common ones is the parent who... They need housing. They need to find affordable housing. And a judge, if they're going through the custody process, isn't going to grant custody if the child doesn't have a safe right. place to stay, or a place to live. So once we started hearing about that, it's like, wait a minute, we, there must be something we can do about that. Um, and at first it kind of seemed like, well, it's outside of the work that we do, but it's really not. Because if the goal is to establish a, a successful co-parenting strategy and custody for a responsible parent, and Greg and I, it's just the way, way we think and the way we approach this, we, we decided, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. And it actually was pretty easy to do. No matter where you live, you live in a county. That county has a county government, that county government has usually a human services department, sometimes it's named differently, but those departments have services and programs for rental assistance or down payment assistance. So it really became a matter of just learning about what's out there. Mm -hmm. These resources do exist. It's really just a matter of us being educated ourselves on what's out there, how to find them, how to use them, and then further just um, making more parents aware that these resources exist. So it creates a lot more work, but it doesn't cost us anything. Mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really a matter of, okay, what county do you live in? Um, and while we're web-based and we work with parents in all 50 states, the state of Florida is, is our priority right um, and then there's key exactly. counties that that we focus on but really it's uh, knowing what's out there and then helping parents just bridge that gap between the needs that parents and families have and the resources that do exist it's just a matter of, of connecting them yeah that's uh, that's really amazing it's it's uh, most people are going about their daily lives and they don't do this deep research right. and when they come to you I'm sure they're probably taken aback and happily surprised at what benefits they are entitled to. It's, it's very gratifying to have a parent come to us and express that they've had this issue for four or five months. Yeah. And then it might take me four to five minutes wow. on Zoom with them to just show them not just one resource, but several of them. A lot of the times, again, it's your local government, your county resources, other nonprofits that, that exist in the area, program partners of ours, other agencies. So it, it is very gratifying to hear someone who's been going through a challenge and looking for, in some cases, several months, and then they connect with us, and it takes us it's a matter of maybe five minutes to help them. So you're, you're quite the consultant. We're very much like uh, community navigators yeah, yeah, in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah. yeah, incredible, incredible. Now, do you charge for your services? We do not. No, everything is free. That was a big. That was a big part That's of huge. what we wanted to do. Um, right. So the direct services are free. There's no gated content. You don't have to fill out any forms or pay to access the site. It's it's really it's openly accessible and available to literally anyone who has an internet connection. Um, but that was very important to us that you know instead of focusing on a certain area like Central Florida, which is where Greg lives, or Tampa Bay. Just make it open to everyone, and that way we can help as many people as possible. And your website is, is again, our children have rights together, no dots between them, dot org. Correct, that's right. Our children have rights dot org. Gotcha. Which is also the name of the organization. It's almost like autotrader.com. Oh, so that's your, that's so your the, right, the, the goal name. was to 
just further emphasize that we're this web-based organization. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about where we're based out of. Right. You can access us, yeah. ourchildrenhaverights.org. Gotcha, gotcha. Tell us about Sand Key Park and Beach. Sure, so that, uh, that's been a lot of fun. We adopted Sand Key Park and Beach in the last couple of months, and you know, fundraising is kind of the, the only concern that we have. That's the hardest part. The mm -hmm. good news is the easy part is helping parents every day. Um, it's actually pretty easy. You just, you know, Greg isn't, he's too humble to say this himself, but he is an expert in this field because mm -hmm. of his lived experiences. But, um, you know, we have to get very creative, especially with marketing and, and how we, how we pay for these things. We've got a great marketing game, a great social media game, and we don't spend much money on it at all, but we have to continue to be creative and do good marketing that um, you know that that yields results uh, without paying for it. Right, right. And adopting a park is actually a great way to do that. We'll have a big sign at the entrance of the park. If you're not familiar with it, it's a huge park. Uh, I think there's about six thousand parking spots there. There's three dog parks. There's multiple picnic areas. Mm -hmm. um, it's and a for big. For those vision. who don't know, this is this is. <laughs> Just south of Clearwater Beach. Right. It's a separate island, actually. Right. It's yeah, so it is in, it's in the city of uh, Bel Air Beach, and it's just right. south of, of the inlet. But yes. people come to Clearwater Beach from all over the world. Right. So this isn't just your you know your typical neighborhood park. This yeah. is like a crown jewel park within the state. Um, We've got so, to go there, Kel. We need to go there and visit this place. Oh, yeah. Well, if you want to come volunteer with us, um, you, you certainly can. It's... Yeah. Uh, so it's a unique opportunity to have a big sign at the entrance, which if you go to the park, you pass the sign. It's almost like instead of spending however many thousands of dollars on a billboard, we have this for free. Uh, but what we do there is it's a lot of litter removal, trash pickup. Um, after Hurricane Ian, um, there was a lot of debris to pick yeah, up. Branches. Branches, trees, exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's other things that we could do, power washing the picnic areas, painting. Uh, there's always work to be done at, at the park, sure. Uh, but it is a good way for us to really just further give back to the community, uh, but also partner with other organizations who, if they want to do outreach events with their employees, this is now an opportunity for them to partner with us and we can clean the beach together um, and, and collaborate. How do they contact you if they want to become a uh, adopter? They can, uh, they can just, they can email me directly, jakehornstein at ourchildrenhaverights.com. Uh, Spell your name. H O R N S T E I N. Right. And that's Jay Kornstein at ourchildrenhaverights.com. Very good. Very, very good. Sounds like uh, you're doing all kinds of good good works for the community. We are. We are. It's, it is very gratifying. We've got a long ways to go, especially with, with fundraising. Greg and I, we don't pay ourselves salaries. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and the work is, we, we don't charge parents for anything. So, we're getting creative with some fundraising things, different promotions and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, this is, you know, we're very happy. We just wrapped up yeah. our first official year. And again, the stuff that's most important, the impact, the number of parents we've, we've positively affected and thus the number of children we've, we've helped, it's, um, it's been great. Do you have any foundations or corporate folks who are uh, sponsors? We do, we have a lot of program partners and it's less, they're not funding sources. They're more of organizations that we collaborate with. Right. So, for example, Feeding Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. We work with a lot of parents who, you know, they're, they're employed. They're not underemployed. They're fully employed. But between spending tens of thousands of dollars on litigation, um, but also, you know, it's getting harder and harder to keep pace with the cost of living. They now find themselves, they need access to, to food banks and mm -hmm. food pantries. So, through partnerships like Feeding Tampa Bay, uh, they help us with that. They also have things like benefit outreach coordinator. So for the parent or the family that needs to apply for a program like SNAP, Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, those application processes, they're not always that easy. Yeah, so, right. Right, so these partnerships, they have, and we help people with those applications as well. But um, you know, Florida Blue is another good one, Pinellas County government. It's a long list, so I'm gonna end up leaving people out. But uh, <laughs> they're all on the site and they're not, Funding partners, uh, they can be if they'd like to be. <laughs> <laughs> Step up, exactly. Play, right? But uh, no, we can't really do. We could do the work that we're doing, but there are these other things. Learning from parents that who would have thought that we would be a resource for finding baby formula yeah. for for parents that that couldn't find it yeah, or they couldn't. Critical. Exactly. So it's, it's amazing how current events 
really do affect a lot of the work that we do. Um, what do you do uh, usually? What, how do you get your, how do you pay the bills? Well, the overhead isn't that much. No, I'm talking about not not this organization, but you personally. Me personally? Well, it's... Right, what, are you a developer or are you uh No, I mean, I this is my full-time my full time gig. Wow. So, uh, yeah, any That's support amazing. any support is uh, definitely greatly appreciated. And look, you know, Greg and I, we believe in what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And we know that this was going to take time. Yeah. But we've built an unbelievable product. We get great feedback from... Other leadership in the, in the space, the nonprofit space, people who worked with families and children for for decades, and who would have thought that we were really the first ones to come up with this web based concept yeah. uh, that has it's not just a free resource center, but has the direct services um, for free. So, yeah, you know, we don't lose. If I come back in eight months, um, and <laughs> then I might have more concern about uh, you know if we're not. If we're not taking salaries, but you know, we knew what we were getting into. Sure. We do. We're very good at keeping costs low, especially from a marketing standpoint. Um, we well, spend very little money on marketing. In business, you know, you got to plant before you can harvest. Sure, sure. That's and just that's, the way it goes. And you come a yeah. long way in just one year. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Well, tell us about your family. Uh, well, my family. It's really in terms of my household. It's just myself right mm -hmm. now. I was married, but not for not for very long. And. Um, you know, we didn't have children together, so that makes things a Less lot different, right? Less complicated. So sure. fortunately, you know, it was at the right age where um, without having children, it overlapped with COVID and a career change. So I, you know, everything has worked out uh, very, nice. very well. Good for you. That's fantastic. What do you like doing on your time off? I'm sure you've you got some uh, sort of ways to let, yeah, the, of let, course. let the stress so out. I try to stay very active. I'm on a couple of co-ed softball teams. Oh. I play a lot of basketball. And I go to that beach and park a lot. Um, that's, you know, I started going there with groups of friends um, for a while. And then I have been familiar with the Adopt a Street program, Adopt a Park program. I actually have a street right down the street from here. It's Drew Street to Fairmont Street. Mm -hmm. It's about a mile and a half on the on MLK Boulevard. Uh, so I adopted that a few years ago. Um, and, you know, when you go to these parks and they're not adopted, they have the signs, Adopt a Park, yeah, right? And, right? You know, contact us for more information. And I thought, Wait a minute. Why doesn't the, let's have the nonprofit adopt a park? Right, we'll yeah, get the yeah. big sign, and and it could lead to lead to other things. So um, very good. Very, yeah, very stay good. busy, stay active. Well, we've been chatting with Jake Jake Hornstein. He's the founder and COO of OurChildrenHaveRights.org, and also uh, has a great thing going here with the Sankey Park and Beach. So uh, if uh, you're interested in becoming involved with that and are learning more about it. Uh, as far as uh, your email, I think you gave it out before. Yeah, again, again. that's jakehornstein at ourchildrenhaverights.com, J-A-K-E-H-O-R-N-S-T-E-I-N at ourchildrenhaverights.com. Very nice, very nice. And uh, we've enjoyed having you on the show. Thanks a lot for all you're doing for our community and for the nation, really, not just a local thing. It's a universal issue. Yeah, It really yeah. is. It could happen to anybody. Yeah, so uh, absolutely. appreciate that. Love being on here. We love listening to, to you both um, and following you on, on Facebook and Colorful Clearwater and, and all that. And um, well, that was great to be here. We appreciate it. We'll have you back for sure. All right. Jack Hornstein. That's so super. And listen, we're going to take a short break and uh, we'll be back right after these messages to round things out. Absolutely. So stick with us, I think. Uh, Something didn't stick right. So anyway, this is uh, this is radio. This is it live is. radio, just like live TV. You have to sort of just react and bounce yeah, back. Yeah, roll with punches. Yeah. Uh, what's what's nice too is that when our broad, with our broadcast with the three stations and the three AM three, we have a pretty broad net mm -hmm. of people listening. You can see that it's all the way up from Pasco all the way down to uh, Brent Bradenton. That's a big big footprint. Yeah, it is. It is. So we we certainly hope we can. Do a little bit of good and help you out and uh yeah absolutely will i mean this is great for us to go on air and you know once we get the recording or the link to to the youtube page um we're gonna blast it out just like we, we did the awesome. first time we love i don't know that. if you heard before we went on here is, is the ad playing now no i don't think so yesterday oh it is okay Our ads we got on. a call right before we left from somebody in europe she says she listened. i was listening yeah, yeah. She, left, she listened on she's waiting on her ballot well, she's from Clearwater, and I've talked to her several times, but she's in Europe right now, yeah. so that's kind of cool. 
Well, look, I mean, with things online, you could watch it on Facebook. Yeah. Right? You could watch it on you YouTube. Have it on YouTube. Yeah, so. YouTube, and then it's podcast as well. So there's okay. several several ways you can listen. But. So, um, here's, you know, my son. After paying his child support, he's got this much to live on. Yeah. Right? What? What, I guess what I uh, what I want to know is I really really want to get him a lawyer, but is there a way of getting like either a low cost lawyer or what are the chances of getting a pro bono lawyer? It depends on, you know, he would have to qualify. So we where does he live? Right now he lives in St. Pete. His his dad needs the room for some he, relative. That's so we state. we so work with gonna, Bay Area Legal Services. He's looking has, for a place. So. Okay. Um, yeah, have them reach out to us. There's really no reason not to. Um, okay. Like, we, we literally will work on his behalf for free. And either connect him, help him find pro bono legal okay. assistance. Well, thank you kindly for being with us on the Kelly Kelly Show. Uh, Doug Kelly with... Kelly Kelly, wife and co-host. And uh, Kelly, it's about uh, time for you to wrap things up. Why don't we thank our guests first? Our guests today were Dave Albritton, Clearwater City Council member, and Jake Hornstein. He's the founder and COO of Our Children Have Rights. And that, both excellent guests, very informative. Very, very good. Yes, that's help our, what is it? Uh, what? What is it again? I think it's dot org, isn't it? Dot org. Yeah. Our children have rights. Dot org. There you go. There you go. Uh, and also, uh, it's about time for us to go right into our close. And you have a verse, I believe, I do for this have a week. Verse. Let's do Very it. Very apropos for today. Psalm one twenty seven verse three. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring a reward from Him. And you know, I like to wrap up the show with an adage every week, and this one is really worth remembering as I have lately and this is from Sir Winston Churchill when going through hell keep going <laughs> never let up keep keep the foot on the gas pedal you'll get through it and you'll see the light on the other side of the tunnel so on behalf of Kelly Kelly and Ed Davis thanks for sharing this hour with us please remember to tune in each Monday at the same time and station for another edition of the Kelly Kelly show Sorry about that.